choice upon his side, choosing that he will do that with us, and then it is done because his almighty power carries on the work. And look at that illustration. You can barely see it because it's light in here, and we're thankful for light. His almighty power carries on the work. And then he gave himself for our sins, and now he comes and says, there is sin. What then? Lord, it is sin. That is confession. When he shows me something and says, it is sin, and I agree with him and say, it is sin, that's confession. That's agreement with God. And the root idea of confession is to speak the same thing. The root idea of the Greek word translated confession is to speak the same thing. That is confession. And the Lord said to David, you've sinned and done evil. David said, I have sinned. That is confession. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And what does God show them for anyway? The only thing that he shows men their sins for is that he may take them away. Yeah. Trash man came on, uh, comes on Monday and Thursday in my place. But God's the trash man will take it away every minute, any day, any time that the bad thought comes through. Take it to God. Let the trash, let him take it away. When he shows me my sins, I say, Lord, Lord they are sins. No, oh, no, usually I say, um, I don't think it's really that bad. I mean, it, let's call it a bad habit. I just want to call it a bad habit. I don't want to call it a sin. <laughs> but that's me in my heart. I, I don't know about your heart. Your heart's probably a lot better than mine. So when he shows me my sins, I say, Lord, they are sins. That's kind of a reluctant agreement, huh? Because if I know that there are sins, I'm going to have to change. I'm going to have to give it up. I'm going to have to have a different pattern of life. And I have to be a believer that says what he wants me to have is better than what I want me to have. Amen. That, that's a big deal. To me, that is like the teeter-totter of choice right there. If I can believe that what he wants me to have is better than what I want me to have and what I've already taken a hold of, then... He can win this, this debate. This debate. And when he shows me my sins, I say, Lord, they are sins. And what then? Then they are forgiven. Amen. Then they're gone. And now, you folks have confessed your sins since you've been here even today, haven't you? Yes. And all that the Lord has shown you? Yes. Have you? And everyone who has done that, his sins are forgiven because the Lord says so. And what do you say? Yeah. But Satan says it's not so. He's a liar. And some folks have been saying that Satan tells the truth upon that sin, upon that point that your sins aren't gone. And people in his house have been telling Satan that he has told the truth upon that very point. And Satan says they are not forgiven. And they say, no, they're not forgiven. Let's quit that. We confess our sins that they may be forgiven. And the Lord says they are forgiven. And when they are forgiven, why then in the Lord's name, let's say so. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had. And the Lord says, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And so what do you say? How do you know? The Lord says so. Very good. Then you know that it is so, do you? In Micah chapter 7, verse 19, we read it, and let's read it together again. Wonderful hope. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Then where are they? In the depths of the sea. How do you know? He says so. Then you know that, don't you? Amen. Then how in the world is anybody going to bother you about getting your sins back to you? Psalm 
103, verse 12. I love this when I first got converted. Oh, what a relief this was. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. How far away, uh, how far are they away from you now? You will confess them. How far are they away? As far as the east is from the west. Well, why don't you say so then? Let's say that. As far as the east is from the west. Satan comes and says, they are not forgiven. Every sin is right there before your face. Don't you see them? Are no. they right before your face? No. no. Says someone, I've seen them. He, there, it's nothing of the kind. Satan is a magician and can make things appear so that are not so. But you look at them and say, yeah, that's so. It is not so. The Lord says they are as far away from us as the east is from the west, and they're in the depths of the sea, and they're as white as snow, thank the Lord. And that verse is the last one we need this afternoon. Amen. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption, for thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. How many? All behind his back. Where are they then? Behind his back. Oops. Behind his back. We are before his face, and the sins are behind his back. And who is between us and them? God. Between us and our sins is God. And he is upon his throne, isn't he? Amen. And then when I confess my sins to the Lord, He and His living eternal throne stand between me and those sins. And Satan and everybody else in the universe cannot bring them back. For He has got to get to the Lord and His throne out of the way before they can get those sins back to me again. And here's a little thought. A little Revelation 3.21 <clears throat> to him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Amen. Are you glad to get rid of your sins? Yes. And can we know these things? Yes. Can we know them? Yes. How can we know that we know them? Mm, the Lord says so. When he says so and we believe it, that is faith. Amen. Satan says, they're not behind God's back. We say, I know they are. Satan says, no, they are, there they are. And we say, they are not there. They are in the depths of the sea. Somebody praise said, the praise Lord. the Lord. And when the man stands there, there, when the man stands there, there is something that God can put his seal on. When the man said, when the Lord says, thy sins are forgiven, that he has cast them behind his back, and the man cannot, will not believe it. Is there anything there the Lord can put his seal on? No. And someone asked that uh, Isaiah 43 be read, and he did read it. And here it is. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to commit to your heart so you can stand holy before the throne of God and ask for help in time of need. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. There are many other texts like that which we might notice. One is found in Hebrews 8, 12. Their sins will I remember no more. Another in Ezekiel 33, 16. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. Amen. Here the Lord says he will not remember our sins. The Lord will never mention them. That's Satan's work to do that. Mm. Brethren, let us believe the Lord. Amen. And when you believe that, then God will give you and me the circumcision of the heart, the seal of the righteousness of the faith that we have, and He can do it. Because there is something there He can put His seal upon. And when a man does that as an individual, or a woman, or a child, He receives the seal of righteousness. And when we, as a whole body, as a church, believe that, we can ask with perfect confidence for the outpouring of His Holy Spirit Amen. and wait patiently and confidently knowing that it will surely come in His own good time. Ellen White said this, I believe without a doubt that God has given precious truth at the right time to brothers Jones and Wagner. 
And if we are ready to choose Christ instead of that, we can make the trade. We can stand in righteousness before God. So let's sing this song. Please stand. We're going to sing number 322. The name of this song is Nothing Between. And when I think about Nothing Between, number 322, here's what happens for me. I remember being asked to play for an evangelistic series, and they were going to have this song as being one of the songs. And I thought, how can I play this? How can I sit out in the front? Unless if there's anything between me and the Lord. I, I'm not worthy to even play the piano or pretend like, you know, I'm just part of the furniture over there. If this is a song that there's anything between me and God. So this concept of being bought, this concept of, of, of choosing and believing that there's something better that he has, that has to be real. That has to be real, and we have to do it. Amen. We have to keep saying, I want Christ instead of that. Amen. You know what it is that is there for you. You know what that that is. Amen. And there might be only one thing at a time. Because God is gracious, He's merciful, He doesn't want to crush your spirit. While we sing this song, and it's a prayer song, just, just be there with Him, would you? Just be there with Him. If you got to close your eyes, if you got to cry, this is the time to cry. We're allowed, we're allowed to be with, uh, with Jesus. Amen. As we sing this song, and uh, I want to go down and play it. Thank you, Brother Donovan.
what you're thinking, except for the Holy Spirit. The spirit of the man knows the man.